Okay, I'm back for another round of Nerdtopia, Nerdvana, whatever you want to call it, trying to find um, interesting things to do with the uh, QGIS development environment. So, some time ago there was a message from Andreas about this um, dialog that opens on QGIS if you run it for the first time. He said, oh, that thing looks a bit ugly, and I, I'd noticed the same thing, and I was meaning to one day go and have a look at it. So, today's the day. I'm going to go and have a look at it and take you along for the ride. I can't promise what I'm going to achieve in this session. I'm just going to record and uh, you can maybe learn something or maybe just get entertained by my lack of skills in doing this stuff if I, if I get totally lost. So um, the dialogue that I'm talking about, you'll only see when you run QGIS for the first time. It means that I kind of need to set up my environment so that it thinks that I'm running QGIS for the first time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, um, oh, that's frustrating, why doesn't want to resize? Okay, I'm gonna go into my, my console here and um, find my directory where, um, where that my settings are for QGIS and sort of just move them, rename the, direct, the settings um, folder for now, just so that it thinks that I've got a fresh settings environment. So. That is stored in Linux under uh, local, um, maybe under config, no, I think it's local share. Um, uh, that's just under config, and then you'll see there's a Q, just let's see where it is. Um. Okay, um, well, it's easy enough to figure it out if you're being slow like I am and you can't find it. We can ask Q just to tell us. So, uh, in fact, it's actually showing. Um, I don't actually know why it's picking up something from there because that's not my one, but it's actually over here. I can see it. But I'm going to show you how to find it in the application itself as well. Um, you've got this uh, settings user profiles, and there's an option here to open active profile folder. So if I do that, it shows me that it's in dot local share QGIS. So Go back to the terminal here. CD dot local share. All right, and there is QGIS. There. Okay. So I'm going to just move this aside for now. QGIS to QGIS like that. Um, I should have done it while QGIS was closed. Let's just see if it made another one on the way out. Yeah, I did. I'm just going to remove whatever it made. Just if you've invested a lot of time and energy into your QGIS configuration, just do this carefully because otherwise, uh, you know, if you delete the wrong thing, you could lose all your previous settings. Okay, now I'm going to run QGIS again and see if we can get that screen to come up. So it should think it's a brand new install. I keep meaning to go and change this build target that starts, right? Yeah, so this is the dialogue that I'm interested in. It doesn't look so great. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, think this icon is not aligned to anything. Um, uh, the, the text is not all in the same alignment. It just feels a bit kind of weird. So it doesn't match the rest of the application very well. And I want to go and just try and tidy this up again. So I'm going to be doing a bit of cute designer to figure this out um, and now to find that dialog I'm going to go and look in my code directory so um, and that the designer the dialogues are normally all under source UI and you'll see there's a long list of them here so I'm going to list them with grip for welcome let's see if we can find something there 
Um, let's try just a few little Unix C things to find it. No, so maybe it's not actually called welcome, but um, there should be inside of one of those files at least the text string welcome because you know we know it said welcome on the front of this, uh, you know, at the top of the form. So um, I'm going to just do egrip uh, minus um, like this. Let's just do it like this. So it's gone through and it's been looking for welcome, welcome anywhere in any of these things. The style manager dialog, no. Um, so the other way we could approach it is look in the um, in this boot up process of QGIS and try to see what happens there. So let's go here to the QGIS project. And then go to source and then we look for the QGIS app, something like that. Let's go to the GUI. Um, This Q, I think this one is going to be QGIS app. It's only one that's QGIS instead of QGIS. Let's just see what happens in here. I'm just going to be looking down to see. I can see there's the splash. Um, we know that the thing appears after the splash appears. So um, now I just want to check if this is the file that Niall was referring to the other day as being the 65,000 line beam. This one is. Um, almost as bad as 16,000 This thing deals with all the, um, all the initialization stuff. Maybe this is the same one he was talking about. So I'm gonna just look for welcome in this file here. Welcome page, that might be what we want in there. Welcome page. Um, now, I'm gonna hit a file. It would be nice if there was just a comment explaining what the class is for. Um, we could be doing something like this um, here. If we do something like that, it should come up in the um, in the API documentation. So I'm just going to. Um, I'm going to quickly jump over to the API docs um, and see if we can find that welcome page. We're going to take from master over here and I'm going to search for QGS welcome page. Just try welcome. showing any match so I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way here oh, okay so it's not part of the API it's probably wouldn't, why I wouldn't find it maybe um, and it's also probably why it's not that important that it gets documented like I'm talking about because it's actually not part of the API it's just uh, Part of the user application in front of the API. Um, right now, so what I'm interested in is going to look at the implementation here, like this. Um, okay, so now I'm in the source here and I want to see does it implement from a widget? Because that those UI files I was looking through was I was trying to find the base class that this thing was built on. And I can see here that it's actually all built by hand, which might be making it a bit more difficult to um, to
to edit because now I can't just go and drag and drop things around. It's got um, all sorts of logic in here. Uh, and actually, this is not even the right thing. This welcome page is um, what shows on like the um, the splash of if not the splash but the the main application window. Let's let's do it like this and show you. It's this thing over here. It's this welcome panel. Okay, so I'm not interested in that. So I'm going to go back out again. I'm going to go back and remove my um, um, it's, I've got a goldfish memory, so I can't remember where it was, but let's go back uh, local cd local share and I'm just going to remove my QGIS folder again let's just make sure I still got my QGIS underscore one that's the one that I care about keeping all right so we know it's not that welcome page I'm going to go back to the app um, and keep looking at um, maybe something like first uh, I'm just trying to find out what that thing is called um, First time, first time. No, okay. And I think I maybe then want to go look in another place. I'm going to go look in, um, not in QGIS app, but QGS application. Let's try. Um, QGS application. So is this the behemoth that Niall was talking about? This one's only 2,400 lines, so yeah, it's not the behemoth one. This thing is doing a whole lot of uh, just initially bootstrapping the application and um, it should be the thing that also takes all the initial command line arguments, but I'm just going to check if I remember that correctly. Um, yeah, so here it's taking the argc and argv command line arguments and maybe we'll find in here something about a splash. Okay, because the splash um, displayed first and then that first run thing. So I don't think this is the right place. I think we've got to go back to, let's go and see where the splash screen got created here. Splash. Um, let's see after let's see where that gets used okay so splash is doing all its thing about showing you all the providers starting and loading python uh, restoring loaded plugins and then um, checking the Python bindings and then here it's setting the, res the, the welcome page. Now that thing that I'm looking for is sort of interjected in between this part and um, the, the plugins and everything I think so I just wanted to just check through here and see if I can figure out what's going on. If you still can't find what you want, then you're going to have to look for some text from that dialogue and search the whole code tree. So 
which is where I think I'm going to land up going now. Um, okay, so I can't find the thing that I'm looking for, so I'm going to go back, make sure this is still set so that it appears. Let's go run again, Jesus. Um, run it again and see where the message appears. I keep wanting to make this faster, so I think while it's doing that, I'm also going to go here and change the build target. I'll just keep that there. That's what you want to, we want to go and work on now. I want to change the, the build step to build. At the moment, it's building all, but I want to do QGIS Desktop, which is a tip that Matthias Kuhn gave me just to get a faster startup without it building everything. It, it won't build all the providers and things, but generally we don't need those. Um, let's have a QGIS desktop. So I'm going to make that the run target from now on, and let's see if we get a bit, a bit faster run uh, startup time. Okay, so we've got this dialog that's appeared here, and it says, welcome to QGIS at the top, and it says, welcome to QGIS again, and then it says, uh, Check out the change log for all the new stuff. Okay, so I want to I want to search for that phrase through the code tree here. I'm going to go back into my um, source folder here. I'm going to go into the source directory and I'm going to just do a massive egrep through the egrep through here. This is like just real um, most inefficient way to find it, but since I can't figure out where this thing comes from, I'm going to just use brute force to find it. All the new stuff. I told you the memory like a goldfish, that's why I to keep checking what it says in there. And, and then I'm going to do that star and just, uh, and I don't want to do that recursively. Minus R. Uh, sorry. Uh, check out the change log. Let's just make sure I didn't make a mistake or something like that. Mm. So I'm a bit confused why it's still not finding it. I just want to make sure I get my argument right. Check out the change log. Check out the change log. Maybe that's because this part here is a hyperlink and it's probably going to have some ahref stuff around there. So maybe if I searched just the change log. for all something like that. Oh, okay, there we go. First run dialogue. Okay, jackpot. Um, now if you can read through all this here, you see it's got an H ref here, change log, and then for all the new stuff. Okay, so we want to open this, and I'm glad it is done in a UI file because that's kind of what I was hoping for, that I could go um, and sort of uh, tweak that UI file. Let's see if we can get designer up here. Okay, so we're going to open that file. So I just have to gain my goldfish memory to the rescue here. This was in UI QGIS first run dialog. So I'm going to go to dev, pp, QGIS, source, UI, um, QGS first run dialog. Um, that one there. Woohoo! Okay, there it is there. Now, when you see it on the screen there, it looks quite different to what you see when it when it runs. So, what I want to do is just make some quick tweaks to it and see. I can see there's some funny stuff going on. There's layouts, like um, there's this green layout here. I don't know what that's doing there. And, um, well, okay. That's KDE behaving weird. Um, all right, so 
and they try to align this thing up to be like balanced in between those. I mean, that layout actually looks a lot better um, than what it shows. So let's see why it doesn't actually do that. What I like to do is just like go and break all the layouts and then kind of start from scratch. Let's see. In fact, I, I usually like to just use a grid layout and try and avoid having lots of layouts if I can. Um, you know, you can press Control R to preview it. So that already looks a little bit, I wouldn't say it looks great, but it looks a little bit better. Um, I want to try to find some balance in this thing and um, um, I don't know, just make a f person feel a bit more um, at home <laughs> when they arrive uh, on QD7. Know that this is doing that for us. So um, these are useful because they want you to import your previous settings. Um, and then there's some wrapping things going on over here. This should go all the way across here. And that's because this is in another layout. So let's go and break some more layouts. Um, I just like breaking up all the layouts. Now there, there may be a reason that was there. Let's just have a look. When I broke that layout, those things disappeared. Where did they go? I think they went squashing inside of here. This is actually a key widget, not a layout. Okay. And it's now got this thing here, which is squashing all the content down there. If I put that in a grid like that, and let's get rid of that space over there. And then we could tell this thing just occupy a bit more space on the page. Let's break this layout again. Ah, we can even get that completely out of this red box. Now what this, it is a layout here, I don't know what it's doing there. I just want this widget here and I want this thing to go as wide as you can across the page, please. This thing we could make it as like a nice big button maybe. I'm just playing with ideas to see how we could lay it out. This thing here, make like this. What if we made the queue a bit bigger? Okay, it's got some scaling things going on there as well. I don't know what image is in there. Let's go and have a look. Um, okay, it's a small icon. That's not going to scale too well. And is that coming out of our resource file? Um, So there's that one there, let's try that. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, so what if we make this thing go really big like that? Create a bit more of an impression when you land up on the page. And then uh, maybe move this a little bit like this. And then uh, this can also come in here now. I don't know why this has got a big font and that's got a small font. I think I'm inclined to try to make it match that font there. So um, if I'm going to match the font, I may as well just put it inside of that same con same uh, label. Um, I don't need all of it. I just need this here through to there, I think. Uh, come on. So sometimes for this kind of thing, it's just annoying to work in there. So I'm going to just copy that, open up, um, open up a text editor. Let's open up Kate and um, chuck it in there and sort of do what I want to do with it. So. Uh, we want to keep that a h rep for now. I want to do small sort of incremental changes rather than changing a lot of stuff in one go. Um, 
it's got some style stuff in there as well which, uh, yeah we can leave it there for now i just want to go like that maybe to start so let's take that text and put it in the bottom of this thing here in a new paragraph maybe Okay, and then we can get rid of that. Um, right, and then, oopsie, I don't want to do that. And then this whole box, I want to move up a bit here. And that can move up a bit there. Now, let's see. Um, what happens if I put that whole thing in a grid layout? Okay, that <laughs> totally smashes it. I'm gonna just undo that again. So I wonder, I think I want some kind of like placeholder here. I'm just gonna put a, um, a spacer. And I'm gonna put this whole lot of stuff here into maybe one um, like a vertical layout like that uh, layout vertically yep um, I want it to be wide as it can go now those two things will be seen like as one widget each in the grid this thing will be seen as spanning um, the two widgets that will seen as, be seen as spanning two widgets. So let's try again and just uh, see what it does when I put it in a grid. Okay, it still looks a mess. So I just need to have a look and see here. This thing here is kind of overlapping that stuff. That's not going to work. Ah, I keep doing that, don't I? Okay, so let's make sure that's not overlapping anything. Where's the top of you? There you go. Don't overlap that. Don't overlap that. All right, let's try again. Okay, that's looking a bit better. Let's try it in preview. I think that looks tidier. I don't know. You can tell me what you think in uh, in the comments, but I think it looks tidier than what we had before, at least for a start. So I like to make incremental changes. Like I said, I wouldn't have minded for this text to be just a little bit down. But I'll take that as a, as a start. So let's save that and go to Kit Creator again uh, over here and just tell it to uh, just kill this. And the problem is, it's obviously run queue just already once, and so now we won't see it again. So we're going to go, I'm going to build that in the one hand. Uh, let that build and then on the other hand I'm going to go and just uh, move my RF um, local queue I believe I've forgotten it again here we go local share okay Again, I'm careful not to delete the one with the underscore because I want um, I want um, I don't want to delete my sort of production settings there. Okay, so that's deleted. Um, it's built already pretty quickly, and let's have a go and run it and see. I really don't want to say this. Uh, Let's say it was just a comment that I put in that one file, but I don't, I, I don't know if I want to keep it there or not. To say. Ooh, that looks a bit nicer. The Q is kind of, uh, the Q just logo is kind of dropped down a bit. The reason that we don't see the other widget is because 
And that only appears if I've got an old profile, like a QGIS2 profile, that it wants to ask me, do I want to migrate it? Um, I want to just check if the link still works. This text is also for all the new stuff. I think I'm going to put like something a bit more inviting than that. Uh, and I think I want to shove this Q right up, the Q logo up a bit more or something like that. But I think that already looks a bit tidier than what we had before, right? So uh, now it's going to be just a process of iterating and playing with this, um, with this stuff here. So um, I actually should have run it a bit and I uh, should have re tried resizing it a bit because I just want to see like how does it behave if we just go like this. You see the Q is moving up and down depending on how much vertical space we have. This thing has come up over here, but I actually could put it in over here, I think. And then maybe I don't need to have that space. I always try to avoid spaces on my layouts because they always, um, I think, make things a little bit unpredictable with exactly where they're going to land up. So I need to find this widget here. Let's squash that down a bit again. Put it underneath here. I have to break the layout first. That's already broken. Let's squash a little bit like this. All right, that's making more sense to me now. So then we put that, that, and that, and that, like that. And what happens if we put that all in the grid? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, I think that's quite can be quite nice. I just don't know what's going to happen if that's not appearing. So um, I think that would be quite quite a lot nicer. I want to change this line, and I've got to see what happens when this text is not shown on your first run. Um, so let's say instead of all the new stuff. Um, uh, I'll say all the great new features um, introduced with this release. And I love exclamation marks. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite, um, uh, what do you call them? My favorite part of the, um, punct my favorite punctuation mark. So check out the change log for all the great new features introduced with this release. I always like to read everything twice in case I made some silly um, typing mistake or something like that. All right, ready to go. That could be a little bit bold even. That wouldn't be bad if it was bold, right? But um, can we make it bold? We can make it bold using um, bit of HTML, but I, I'm just going to leave it like that for now first. What I'm worried about is if this thing is um, not here. So maybe, anyway, maybe we'll just try it and see what it does. So let's go back to Q Creator. Okay, and I'm going to see if my build is going to run faster this time now. Do not save that. see it's busy compiling that dialogue over here. Luckily this dialogue is up in the user interface layer so we don't have to build all of QGIS. That's why you can see we start off already at 93%. Um, let's have a look. So it's built. Is it done? Okay, just linking the final executable, and now I'm going to try. Uh, let's remember to do this, and then back here, and then no, it thinks it needs to rebuild again, but it doesn't actually. Hmm, I think that looks already better than what we had before. I don't know what you think. Um,
Yep, I think that looks better. Um, and we could try to see if there was another, you know, what it looked like with the other thing um, by trying to create that directory somehow. Um, to do that, we'd have to go look at the logic to see where it looked for the profile. But maybe I'm going to just submit that as the first um, uh, uh, update because I'm pretty sure the other bit is going to look nice. I've tested it in the cube creator, uh, in, in the designer. I think it looks pretty nice. Um, I'm going to take a screenshot. I'm going to find a screenshot tool first. Yeah, I've just installed KDE. I don't know what they use for screenshots in KDE. I'll just see screenshot. So we've got something here. Spectacle. Okay, let's try Spectacle. Um, I just want one window. Window. window under cursor. Oh, come on. Um, yeah, that will do it. So I'm going to save that as something on my pictures here. Uh, yeah, pictures. I'm just going to say um, first run screen no um, hold cues. Okay, so that's for if you don't have something, some settings to migrate. And then I want to make another screenshot of this one here. I'll explain why I'm making the screenshots in a minute. This is to show what it will look like. Um, oh no, why does that give me? Oh, that's just my KDE style or something like that. So I'm going to take this one here just to show what it would look like if you do have something to migrate. Um, okay, and I'll save that as first run screen with all QDIS. Cool, and you might notice I haven't really written a line of code to do any of this, and it's quite maybe interesting for people out there who want to start pitching into QDIS um, and don't feel like you're not a C++ coder or something like that. You can actually do a lot by just learning how the user interface designer works and um, go and improve the layout of dialogues. Although that will only take you so far, but um, I think there's probably quite a few places where you can make improvements like this. Okay, so I've, I've got the screenshot of after my change with the extra options and after my change without the extra options. What I don't have is a screenshot of after my changes, I mean, of before my changes. So I'm gonna go and stash my changes. So get status, let's have a look and see. Get status. Uh, So I can see that one file has changed there. Git, git stash. I'm just going to stash that. And then uh, just close and reopen that again. Um, I see how it was originally. I'm going to use the actual running application as the basis for making the screenshot because that will give a better idea of how it will look. Let's go and remove that again. And then we're gonna build again. Now, I've been thinking while I'm talking to you about this um, change I've made here, and I just don't want to include, I think it would be nice to have some docs there, but I don't think it's relevant to what I'm doing now. So I'm just gonna, like totally rolled it back. I just want to see if I actually change something inadvertently there. Okay, it's all clean. Uh, so I'm going to build one more time.
and then we're going to take a screenshot of it with the old way and I'll have the old way, the new way, the new way with the migration options on it. And then we can go and make a git um, pull request. So I'm already going to go into github. Um, uh, I think it's in my own repo here. All right, so that's my fork of QGIS, and I'm going to push my changes to my fork and then show you the whole process I do of making the pull request, and then we'll let it sit in the queue for review. Um, then I'll stop the video and then I'll wait for. Um, it may take a few days. I'll, I'll wait for someone to review it and hopefully merge it and then um, show you what happened, yeah, like what the process there was and if I had to do any, if there was any feedback, if I had to change something. So let's have a look. Is it built? Okay, it's built. Let's run the game. Okay, so there's the the before version, we want to find our screenshot tool here and take another um, screenshot of that and then save it. Now we're going to call this one first run before fixing. Okay, and that's just I've taken those three screenshots just so that I can put them in my pull request to show um, people what actually changed because. I don't want to have to make them go and dig out the code and open Cube Creator or Cube Designer to actually look at it themselves when they can just look at my screenshot. Okay, so that's there. Uh, now I'm just going to stash pop my change back out. Um, I'm just going to do one thing actually. I'm just going to do git fetch upstream, which is where I, you know, the, the master of QGIS is. It's asking me for that. Let's see, it must be my new KDE setup hasn't got uh, SSH agent running in it. Um, so, okay, and then uh, I'm going to get to reset my hard upstream master so that my branch is exactly the same as what's in master. And then I'm going to do git stash pop. And then I'll see that the UI file comes out there. I'm going to, just because I want to make sure I don't make a bad impression, I'm going to run, I'm going to compile it one more time just to, um, yeah, make sure that I didn't, yeah, because I've pulled in a bunch of other upstream changes now. I'm sure nothing would broken, is broken because my code is very, or my change is very isolated, but just to be sure, I'm going to just build it again and then, um, make my pull request after that when I know everything builds against whatever version I've got in my system. Okay, so let's build. Now this build might take a bit longer than the previous ones because um, it looks like in the git log, go look here, git log, there's been a bunch of changes, Matthias has changed something for some things in SQLite and um, uh, there's other you know, core changes that have been happening. So you can see, if you look at the build progress, I'm down back in 50% building rather than where it was before where it would start building from about 90%. So, um, well, that's life. You just got to wait. So what I can do is start building, uh, start writing my pull request notes so long. And then um, I'm also going to see if it, maybe there was a ticket because I know Andreas, like I said, complained about this as well and it's something that's bugged me for a long time so while that's building I'm going to go and have a look at, at the QGIS ticket queue and see if there is a somebody complaining about it and I can go and claim that ticket I should have done that kind of in the beginning just in case somebody was already working on it first run let's see um, So I'm not seeing anything from scanning through like that. Let's try it with first run as one word. Um, let's try welcome. Um, 
Uh, welcome is not actually the right dialogue, but still just in case. Um, there's another interesting uh, one looking over there that we could go look at later, but um, no, so nobody's already filed a ticket about that, but if you know, if you go and search in the mailing list, you'll definitely find a, a message from Andreas. So I'm not the only one who's complaining about it. So I know I'm going to be making a pull request. I've got to write a little bit of information. If I, if I go and uh, hit pull request here, I'm not actually going to make a pull request yet. Uh, there's, a, there's like a template that normally shows. It says you've got to fill in all this stuff before you make your pull request. And it's going to ask you things about like why have you made it, describe it, and all that kind of stuff. So while Q, Q just is building here, I'm going to go and and Kate here and actually um, sort of type the message that I'm going to put into my pull request. I'm going to just try to make the font bigger because uh, it will make it easier for you to see what's going on. Uh, sorry, every application on my desktop is now being configured for the first time because I've just installed Kate Latree like one hour before I started here. Okay, let's put a nice great big font like that. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So, um, So I'm just describing what, why, what that thing is about. Um, So, um, this Okay, this is a kind of like a feature, so we won't expect to be backporting this to all versions of QGIS, I don't think. I mean, maybe somebody will ask to do it. I could also see a case for saying, okay, why don't we make, make it go into the LTR version so the people using that also get a nice impression, but it's not really a bug. And um, so it probably won't get backported. But um, so there's not actually too much to explain here. If there was some technical things or some special user interactions needed. It should all be explained nicely here because, um, you know, we have to 
we have to make a change log. Uh, uh, we're describing new features, and people should be able to, like, re who are reviewing the pull request, should be able to understand the implications of the of the proposed change. So, um, yeah, I am, in this case, it's fairly simple. I sort of specifically chose something simple um, that uh, would be kind of easy to to do a walkthrough with. So I'm going to keep that text there. We're at ninety percent. Now we should be almost ready to get our pull request made. I'm actually going to, um, I'm already going to write my commit message here as well, I think, because um, I think everything's going to be fine. If it's not fine, I'll sort of roll that back out again and, and fix it and then make a new commit and get status. So I just want to check only one file has changed. I'm saying commit. And I'm going to give my message and we'll say um, improvement. Let's say um, Let's say visual improvements or aesthetic. All right, so that's my pull request, uh, my, my commit. Um, I'm going to make a branch here, git branch. Um, uh, first run dialog something like that of course I can't remember how to use git branch it? Ah, it doesn't matter too much just do it like that git check out first run dialog git push origin first run okay so I'm going to push that off to um, let me type my password first. I'm pushing that off to my um, fork. And you see that it's now created a new branch in my fork. Uh, if I go back to my web browser over here, um, it should give me a notification saying, Okay, you made some change. Do you want to make a pull request? Which I do. I'm not going to submit the request until I've checked that everything builds. You'll see all the um, uh, all the the boilerplate things here about first time contributors. Um, Git sort of um, truncates the message there, so I'm just going to take that. And actually, I don't need this um, here because we've got my pre made message here and I'll put that in there um, so just have a last check um, and then I'm going to go look through this these notes here um, um, I'm also going to be bringing in some pictures so let's bring in those pictures I made so um, I'll put it here before my changes and then we'll take that one that's um, um, first run before fixing this one here. I'm going to drop that in over here. And then um, my changes, um, no migration of 2.6 file. So we're going to drag this one in here and then after my changes um, with two point X profile migration. the wrong way around here so but it just
fix this here quickly. Okay. Let's just preview that and see how it's looking. Okay, that was before. And now you can see after with that and after without it. Could probably still benefit from a bit of white space padding in between here. But I think it looks better than it did before. Um, where everything was just all over the shirt. So yeah, I'm happier than than it was before. So let's go back to right here. So I wanted to show you all this other stuff here. I've already put a description in here. Um, there's notes for you to, to follow um, explaining what and why you've changed it um, and where you want to backport your pull request and so on and so on and then reference to a bug if you find it a bug but remember I didn't find the bug a unit test if relevant but I'm not going to be unit testing this because we don't have a unit test system for UI dialogues really um, and then some request to make sure that you've run the prepare commit, which I've shown in the previous screencast. Again, it doesn't really apply if you're just changing a UI dialog. I'm just going to get rid of all of that so that it's not sitting as boilerplate in my um, pull request. By now, hopefully my build is finished. Yeah, it has. And uh, I've got to remove one more time that um, those settings and then we run it and we just make sure that it looks still as good as it did just now so I think I think I'll actually um, just stop the video here and, and upload it and then um, I'll do a check-in on my next one I'll do a check-in again on this uh, pull request um, I'll submit the pull request now but then I won't wait for it to get merged now uh, the next video I'll start with quickly just doing a check-in to see whether the pull request got merged and if it didn't if there was any feedback i'll go and like take care of that feedback i hope it's not going to build the whole thing again like it's taking its time and maybe because i made a branch in the meantime let's see Okay, there we go. We can't squash it down anymore because this writing here is quite long. Um, we could maybe do something like saying welcome and then the version underneath, something like that. Um, yeah, anyway, I think that's good for now. That's, I'm happy with that. I don't know why it says two there. That's a bit of a mystery for me. But um, let's assume that that is something to do with my. Um, that is strange. Let's assume I see that it did it on the original one as well. Might just quickly. Okay, so that one doesn't do it. Uh, when I ran it, it didn't do it. Might just quickly have a last look in designer. Okay, it's already closed. That's fine. I'll, I'll commit it and then um, uh, let that go off. So here we go. So I'm going to go to my, I'm happy with everything that I've, I've done. I'm going to go back to my browser here and I'm going to hit this create pull request button here. Let's just see if there's any tags I want to give it or labels. Um, UI. Um, See if there's anything else I want to say about it. it doesn't break any API. Um, I don't know if it needs to be backported. Um, 
I would think probably not. So um, needs to go in the change log. Uh, maybe it does. Maybe it does. Maybe yeah, we put a feature label on it. If we put a feature label, uh, then it should be queued into the into the change log as well. Um, um, the milestone we can set to queue just three sixteen. I don't know if it's a feature or not. Anyway, now I will tell will, will correct me if I if I'm wrong. You see, that's due twenty third of October. Um, I think that's it. So I'm ready to commit my uh, to push my. Uh, pull request and hit the green button here. I'm going to sign off and we'll wait for um, someone to have a look at it and then um, uh, come back. Maybe they'll give me some feedback on that thing. I, I kind of feel like I should go and just have a quick look at that. So let me just go and quickly look and see if I can see why the title is doing something weird. So that's the dialogue and the Window title just says welcome to Qtus. It's nothing I'll do. I think something's sticking that extra little two in there. Maybe it's maybe it's my window manager. I'm not sure. But I, I'll leave it for now and then if I uh, get any feedback about it, I'll go and uh, look into it further. So I hope you wat enjoyed watching my poor old brain wander around the code trying to find stuff. But maybe uh, it's if you're new to Qtus, um, you could at least realize that you can be improving QGIS without even knowing any code. I mean, learning Qt Creator is a really good skill and it's all point and click, or I mean, mostly point and click. And um, there, I think there's quite a lot of places in QGIS where it just needs dialogues to be cleaned up and you could already get started doing some sort of low hanging fruit tweaks, just following the similar workflow to what I've just done. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. I need to get some catchy jingle music to sign up, but uh, Maybe next time I'll have something nice. See you next time.